the first thing I want to ask you for those who don't know is what really is SEO? I think it's kind of like this blurry, weird world that not everyone understands. SEO is very interesting because it's sort of an old school tactic that still has some sex appeal. I think it's, it's because it's confusing to people. Yeah. But it's, um, it, it still works. It doesn't work for everybody. And you have to kind of know what you're doing. Um, so what SEO is, is it stands for search engine optimization. And it's basically just where for any given search. And by the way, this is a crazy fact. On Google, 30% of the searches every month have never been typed into Google before, ever. No way. Yeah. So... When you say that, is it they've never been typed in the exact same, like yeah. the exact it's way? Spellings, different phrasings, but sometimes okay. it's like they're new trends, they're new things. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, Ted Cruz Cancun, that just happened, right? Like, that's something that like probably hadn't been Googled before. Yeah. Like, did Ted Cruz really go to Cancun? Da, 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 like all of those different things, that's like a totally new thing. And there's constantly new things happening in the world. So, you know, Shell Spring Collection, at some point that will be a first time, right? Sure. Um, first of all, there are lots of uh, search engines. So like, uh, you know, back in the day, they were all fighting. So Microsoft had one, you know, there was Google, there was Ask Jeeves, Dogpile, like all of these different, and Google really won out. Bing, Mozilla. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, but then there, there are search engines that people don't think about today, like Amazon is a search engine, YouTube is a search engine, Shopify is a search engine, right? Like you type what in Facebook, Instagram, would you consider them a search engine? Uh, in some ways, I mean, it, like if like you have a much rarer name than mine, right? You type in like Mise Gibert and like there aren't as many probably as there are James Cole's and yeah. which James Cole comes up first when you type in James Cole is a way of of thinking of search engine optimization in Facebook or Instagram or whatever. So, I'm yeah. like, I'm SEO for me, so I be, I'm yeah. So, um, so yeah, just simply put, it's like, where do you come up on a search engine? And for most people, when they talk about it, they mean Google. Okay. And when most people think about it, they think of their website, their main base URL. So we've talked about your company before shell, so shell project comes up when someone Googles shell project. Yeah. But it gets more complicated than that. If you were to create content on your website that says why slow fashion is the new fast fashion, you write an article like that. And then yeah. someone Googles slow fashion or slow fashion trendy question mark. Yeah. What comes up first? what comes up second and what comes up 215th. Uh -huh. and there's something called the fat head and there's something called the long tail. So the fat head are like the biggest search terms within your universe. So if your universe is fashion, fashion trends, um, you know, over the knee boots, like what, what are like big, big, big topics that like everyone is talking about. And then what are, and then on the, in the long tail, what are the very, very, very niche, small search terms? Usually they're longer. So it's like um, denim over the knee boots in winter weather. That's like very niche. Mm -hmm. So over the knee boots, I bet you, well, actually, let's just, you know, for people that are watching this, I'll just, I'll pull up how I do this. So I use a bunch of tools, but one of them is called SEM Rush. So over the knee boot there are seventy four thousand people in the united states that google over the knee boot every month okay yeah if i were to do denim over the knee boot it's all the way oh it's literally so let's do leather only six thousand mm -hmm. here it shows the keyword difficulty which is another way of conceptualizing how crowded is that keyword so the higher the number, which right now it's 89, the more challenging it would be to be one of the top 10 things that comes up on Google. So I bet you 
that Vogue has written about over the knee boots and GQ has written about it and Paper Magazine and a gazillion other fashion sites and blogs have written about this. And so your little baby website, and there's a way to measure, Mizel, the, the strength, the respect of your baby website, which is called DA, Domain Authority. Mm. And basically, there are a lot of sites. SEM Rush is one of them. Uh, AREFs is one of them. Moz is one of them. They come up with a score for your website of basically how respected your website is in the eyes of Google. Mm. So the hub has a DA score of 35. My personal website, 21. It's out of 100. And okay. Shell, Shell probably has a very, very, very low project.net you're probably five or something so let's see um moz shell project.net right yeah i mean we're, we're like not even started yet fully so i don't think there's anything you want to make sure for example that you are tracked by google mm. um you're being scraped by google i don't know why it's making me do this it's wasting <laughs> time you okay, did. so you're not actually, which isn't good. We should talk about that after this because you yeah. want to, one of the main things actually that determines domain authority is the age of your domain, how long Google has been looking at it. And the okay. older it is, the more respected it is. Okay. It's a very simple thing, but just an older domain does well. Currently, your domain isn't even acknowledged by Google. So we need to fix that. But mm -hmm. My, my personal website has a, a domain authority of 23. That's actually quite high, you know, for like a personal website. Yeah. Um, my company is 35. Airbnb is like 90 um, out of 100. It gets harder and harder in 92. It gets harder and harder and harder the bigger the number gets. So basically, Mizel, the more respected your website is, the higher the probability that Google shows you first when you publish something. So if Vogue writes about over the knee boots, that's gonna be shown higher than if shellproject.net writes about over the knee boots because Vogue has a higher DA domain authority by a lot. And so Google takes it more seriously when they write about something. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah, yeah. And so the goal of SEO really is to come up with topics that people aren't really talking about very niche things that have some search volume. So 400 people a month are searching for it, but it's not competitive at all. Mm. But what are the keywords? So like, let's just use um, coffee as an example. So within coffee, there are 2.6 million similar keywords, Mizel. Yeah. If I look at If we just were starting a coffee shop, you and me, mm -hmm. here are 6,000 keywords out of the 2 million that we should consider writing about. American press coffee, why? Well, 480 people uh, Google that exact term every month. And it's only 57 out of 100 difficult to rank as opposed okay. to before for over the knee boot, it was 89%. So this is much easier to rank. So if we're just a little pipsqueak with a low DA and we write about American press coffee, we have a much higher chance of ranking for that keyword. So our blog post as a coffee shop about American press coffee instead of French press coffee, mm -hmm. that blog post has a high chance of being one of the top things. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So, you know, the hub, We've written about all kinds of things. If I type in Chicago modeling agencies, what's the first thing that comes up? Mm -hmm. So because this was a very non-competitive search term and we have a decent domain authority, we're the first thing. And there are probably a thousand people a month that search for Chicago model agencies. Yeah. And they come to our website to read about it. 
I'm curious, can you go back? I'm curious, you know, when you're on Google, those eight first choices, uh, scroll down here, are they generated, no, go up by Google Maps, these results, are, are they generated by your article? The article that here? No, yeah. no, no, no. It's generated by Google. So Google has all kinds of widgets that they put in and it's actually, you know, you can learn all about this. Google has all kinds of intelligent widgets. So for example, if you were to type in, what's your favorite French football team, soccer team? Lyon. Lyon. So when you type in like Lyon football club or whatever it's called. Olympique right? Lyonnais. What is it called? Olympique. Yeah, the second one. Okay. So Lyon FC, right? So do you see this right here? Yeah. This is happening because there are matches that are there, like, I guess right now is the middle of some sort of yeah. um, tournament or something, right? And so it's assuming that you don't want to like read the um, Wikipedia page. Mm. It's assuming that you want like the scores that just happened. But if we were to Google this in a month, when there isn't a tournament happening, this wouldn't exist and it would just go right to Wikipedia. So Google will show you stuff depending on like, oh, a game is happening right now. Or um, like if I type in a certain car model, maybe it's like showing me dealers near me as opposed to just telling me about the car and the history of it because it assumes what I want to see. Does that make sense? It totally that's, does. All, that's all Google just deciding. But basically the idea, Mizelle, is like if you can find niche keywords, long-term keywords that are non-competitive, low, low competition, you have a chance of ranking in the top 10. If you yeah. rank in the top 10, you get some traffic. So when people Google leather over the knee boots, all of a sudden you're getting some people to come to your website. And if you brick by brick by brick by brick win keywords, the hub has won thousands of them over time. Yeah. Every single one of them might only bring 20 or 50 or 80 or 100 people a month. But if there are a thousand, all of a sudden, you know, our blog was getting hundreds of thousands of visitors a month through Google. And that's what SEO is. And it all so, builds on itself because the more people that come to the site, the more respected the site is, which yeah. means the higher the DA is. The higher the DA, the easier it is to rank for the next keywords and the next ones. And it, so it builds and builds and builds. So bigger companies get bigger faster smaller companies get bigger, slower. Does that make sense? Yes, and I have a, a question about this because you mentioned to improve your SEO, you have to use keywords. So it means that, I mean, you have, you need written content. For a brand like me, this is not something, how, how does it translate? Because I don't plan on creating a blog. You know, this is not something I want to do. How do I include those keywords to rank better as a fashion brand? Well. I mean, you should have keywords on your, uh, you know, your homepage that are emblematic of what your brand stands for. So slow fashion should be written somewhere and like whatever else are like the main uh -huh. things. Um, blog, you know, blogging and, and, and building it through this strategy is the best way. Alt tags, okay. alt tags are important. So every image on your website Basically, you can put something called an alt tag on it, which is if someone were blind, you describe the image. So you'll say like trendy model wearing, you know, like uh, high water pants made out of canvas, right? Mm. And that, that description of the image is scraped by Google. So that can help. Backlinks are a big thing. So this is how Google was built. And when you read about the, when you read, read about how the internet started, it's actually fascinating. So one of the guys that was responsible for starting the internet, when it was first pitched to him, there was this idea that there would be blue links that link to other things mm -hmm. and that the internet as it was just starting and things were starting to form on it, that everything pointed to everything else. And today, of course, we know that as a hyperlink. Yeah. And Google still uses hyperlinks as one of the most important indicators of how respected a website is. So if many sites write about you and yeah. hyperlink your website, 
Yeah. That backlink, that hyperlink that would direct someone if they were to click it to your website is an endorsement. If the endorsement is coming from a auto mechanic shop or a coffee shop, it's less beneficial for a fashion company. If it's coming from a fashion blog, it's more mm -hmm. beneficial. If it's coming from Got a fashion blog with a high DA, it's more beneficial than a fashion blog with a low. So if you get written up in Vogue, that's a bigger deal than your friend's blog. So the more backlinks you have, the more respected you are in the eyes of Google. So for you guys, what would be really important is getting blogs to, they don't even have to write about shell as the main topic. They could be writing about high water pants and then just at some point in the article say, and there's this new awesome brand called Shell, like uh, their yeah. whole line this, this season is like around high water pants. And they, when they say Shell, it's hyperlinked and it goes to your website. That will strengthen you in the eyes of Google. And the more you can do that more, 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 more over time, it just builds and builds. So backlinks are very important and there are ways to buy them basically on the black market. So you can spend money at a, on a brokerage okay. where they basically go to blogs and they just offer them cash. They're like, hey, sneak shell in, backlink to them, and we'll pay you 250 bucks. And then you, I, pay, you pay the brokerage. So I've paid, I paid 50 grand to brokerages like that over the years. Was it worth it? I don't know. Uh, the hub has pretty good domain authority. Another way to do it is to and Shannon's really good at this, you hire someone in Bangladesh to come up with the URLs and the email addresses of fashion blogs, thousands of them. So uh, thousands of URLs and then an email address associated with it. It could be hello at, but ideally it's like Becky at, you know, fashionblog.com, right? Okay. And then, you email Becky and you say, hey, I know that you try to get out a lot of content. I'd love to write an article on the following topic. We will reference our brand in the article, but you get a free article. So instead of her having to pay a writer 150 bucks or take three hours to write something, you're giving her an awesome article. So if you email a thousand brands and offer them that, or a thousand blogs and offer them that, 26 of them will say, okay, now you write, you have a friend that's a writer or you're a writer, you write 26 blog posts as a guest post, mm -hmm. you sneak shell into that guest post and link back to shell. And that's a sneaky way to get 26 backlinks real quick. So that's, this is how the SEO games played. Really? Should have, yeah, should have known. Okay, um, the last question about SEO is social media. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, apparently from my research, um it's it doesn't directly um influence your seo google ranking but why is it still very important in your seo strategy i i you know what i, I i'm embarrassed to say i don't quite know the answer to this question it's unclear to me like how scrapable and how well documented like so for example here here's something that's really interesting apps on our phone mm -hmm. aren't Anything within an app isn't on Google. Apps aren't Googleable. Yeah. So like that, that's just like a simple thought of like, you think like everything's sort of reachable, like the internet is so big and Google is our door into it. But if there's like an app, like let's just say it's a rest, an app for a restaurant and they have their menu on the app and you want to know if they have yellow fin tuna or not. And you Google that, the, that page of the app doesn't come up. So there are parts of the internet, there are parts of the digital world that aren't reachable by Google. Yeah, but not like every Instagram picture is technically a link. Like you can share it. You can share an Instagram picture um, on a website through like on a blog. Right. And it's through a link. What, what is, how is that content categorized in the eyes of Google? So if you posted a picture of high-waisted pants, yeah. how does Google know that? That, I, that I'm, I don't know. So, so I think, I mean, let me, let me see, because. How does I, Google associate it with your website? 
and they give your website credit for that. So like that, that's sort of the confusing thing is if you post, if, if someone posts a picture and says, thanks shell, and they don't put your website, they just say, thanks shell, like amazing stuff. Or, and you're in an Instagram story or some shit, they could even tag your Instagram handle, but Google yeah. doesn't, Google isn't tracking that Google isn't aware that that happened. So you're not, I, I think it's more about sharing the content you post as a brand and how the more shares you get on social media, the more signals it uh, generates. And then somehow Google like include that in their ranking, which is also very interesting because from what I understood and what I read, some other uh, search engine use uh, social media in their ranking, in their SEO. I mean, Bing, Bing does. Uh, I don't know about Safari, for example. And I think that, I mean, you've heard probably about how uh, there's been lawsuit against Google because they have a monopoly over, um, I don't know, like, yes, yeah, search engine, whatever, and how it can be an opportunity for um, Bing and other search engine. So maybe, I mean, it seems to me that it's still very important to use tags and mentions whenever you post um, on your social media, because even though today it doesn't directly impact your SEO, it uh, to me doesn't mean that you know a few years from now they they're not gonna change their uh, strategy. You know, it's and, something that's very interesting, Mizel. Yeah. In a book I read, there, there's a story where the author goes to a picnic. And Sergey, the one of the founders of Google, is there, and it's right when you know they were really crushing all other search and becoming the search engine, but yeah. they hadn't monetized yet. They hadn't figured out how to make money off of search. So, yeah. in case it isn't clear, the way Google makes a lot of its money, and it's not all of its money, but a lot of it is, you know, Google AdWords, where you can pay to be one of the top things on Google. You can just butt the line and unlike SEO, which is what we're talking about, you can just pay money to be the number one thing for over the knee boots. So that's how they make a lot of their money. And so they hadn't done that yet. They were just building up trust and uh, interest in their search engine. So the author went up to Sergey and he's like, how are you going to make money? And like, do you really think you can become the search company? And he's like, we're not a search company. This is 15 years ago. He's yeah. like, what do you mean you're not a search company? He's like, we're an artificial intelligence company. Yeah. And that was 15 years ago. And so what he was saying is search is just bait. So you train Google because you type in cute puppies. And then what do you click on? And where are you spending time? So if you type in cute puppies and uh, some photos jump up, which one do you click on? And which one do you stay on? And that's training Google that that's a cute puppy. When someone means cute, cute is um, subjective, no? But like we were talking about last time with the wisdom of crowds, enough people Google cute puppies and enough people click on that golden retriever, that golden retriever is a cute puppy. So it's training Google to intuit and become human. Cute is subjective, but Google actually knows the yeah. cutest puppy. And so Google is basically building an artificial intelligence because you know hundreds of millions or billions of people are searching clicking on something google is seeing how satisfied they are with what they clicked on which gives them an indication of how appropriate it was for the search and it's training and training and training an artificial intelligence so that google knows what everything is and then there's the reverse effect of that where Google start telling you what you're looking for. I feel I once they know, you know, once they had like those million billions people Google the same thing. It's so, you know, when you start typing something on Google and they finish the sentence for you. Yes. And sometimes, you know, you, you have like one thing in mind and you end up looking for something else. So that's something I obsess over and we can do another ep episode on this, but it's called, I've done a couple episodes on it. It's called, recommendation engines yeah and like spotify does this very well where when you oh, get wow. to the bottom of your playlist they surface songs that are similar and you're like oh these are great or you sometimes you don't even notice and like 
Amazon's been doing it for years. Users who bought X also bought Y, right? Mm -hmm. If you bought a spatula, a lot of people that bought that spatula also bought this wooden spoon, you know, that you can mix with or whatever. Um, so yeah, where it's all going is, and this ties into advertisements too. It's like, it's all predictive. It's like, oh, based on all the uh, articles of clothing you've bought online in the past, Shell is a company that you should really consider because they make slow fashion, really sustainable yeah. cool shit. And so, you you know, Google uh, results aren't the same, Mizel, for everyone. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're in Lyon or you're whatever in in um, in Burgundy, and I'm in the States, and you Google over the knee boot, and I Google over the knee boot, we get different search results in different orders. Yeah. And so slowly, like just like TikTok is so honed in on who you are versus who I am, every search engine will become tighter and tighter and tighter around who you are and show you only the things that you would like.